to burn off that energy. Come on, go. You know, I make it fun. I get fun. What a brilliant parenting. That's great. That was only one of one of very few. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna you. celebrate the wins here. <laughs> you know, a win get the win. losses. A win is a win. Smart money. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Smart Money Parenting. Scott here, uh, and Chad and I recently got to interview Shannon Waller. She is one of the executive leaders at um, Strategic Coach. They've helped over 20,000 entrepreneurs create self-managing and self-multiplying companies. She's also got a couple of kiddos, and today we're going to talk about some of the hardest conversations to have around money with your kids, especially how much money you make, or net worth, or some of those, what are the, what are the values of skills in your life? So, Stay tuned for the conversation. I have to warn you, it's a little fuzzy at times because it's a little hard to hear. We are in a crowded area for the interview in Chicago. So if there's a couple of uh, rough audio spots, that's why. Um, otherwise, the content's amazing and I hope you guys get a lot out of it. Please share it with a family member or friend that needs to hear it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Yeah, They just did a very nice job. Yeah, Chad was listening. on the vocals. So it was really good. Welcome back, everybody, to Smart Money Parenting. We have a special guest today. We're in the basement of the Strategic Coach House. Big day tomorrow with all our friends in Chicago. In Chicago. And Shannon Waller is here. Uh, she is kind of the queen bee of Strategic Coach. And she is an incredible entrepreneur, thinker, incredible mindset coach. And uh, what, what's your title? I want to make sure I get this right. Oh, I have one. <laughs> I do a lot. Now, I do a lot of different things. All right, she that's played up for strategic coach. Uh, but strategic coach has coached over ten thousand entrepreneurs. Oh, 20,000 20, 20, 20, 20, of the best entrepreneurs in the world. Chad and I have been in this program forever. It's changed our lives, and uh, we are here to talk to Shannon. Should your kids know how much you make? This is yeah. probably one of our hottest button topics. Well, this one's dicey for me. This one is dicey, and so we're gonna hit this head on because I want to hear your story and. I think it's a really important thing because I don't think parents have thought about some of the stuff that you've experienced with this in your family. So why don't you, before we hit that topic, tell them a little bit about your history and like your background for a minute and get them up to speed on your kids and ages. And cool. So I joined Strategic Coach in 1991. So I was 26. Wow. I was very new, very green, had met my husband, had married him yet, all the things. So I loved it. I mean, meeting Dan, he integrates and innovates unlike anyone. That's Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan. We're going to interview him yep. next. But yeah. um, met the founder. Babs, met Babs. And she was like, I loved, I really like what Dan said, but Babs is the one who like pulled me in. It was amazing. Uh, so I joined in July of 1991. So I've been there, been a coach for a long time now. And then eventually married my husband. Uh, long story about that. So you're 39 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's not the math, but he's not the numbers guy. Nope, no, woman ages. no, definitely not. No, no not. woman ages past 39. I don't know oh, where you guys true, came from. Love you. All right. Yeah, all born right. in 65, which one did math. Yeah. Um, but joined Coach in 91, and I've been there for more than half my life, which is kind of incredible. Wow. So one of the things I really appreciate about Strategic Coach is learning about unique ability and the tools to help people put language to that. So Colby profiles, Clifton strengths. So my kids have done every profile known to women. Or man. That's awesome. <laughs> That's kind of how it rolls. What's, what's hey, unique ability? Explain that. So unique ability are those activities that you love to do and are best at. So it's not only that you have superior skill, but you also have passion. You create value and it's easy. It's not hard. It's fun. And which means people often take it for granted. And, you, and the trick is you always see room to get better because you care about it, because you're so passionate. You're obsessed with it. Yeah, like yeah. you're good at it, you're obsessed yeah, with it, and, and you, it creates value in the world. It's That's endlessly it. fascinating and motivating. Right, right, you, right. You're a hero to other people, but sometimes you take it for granted about yourself. Because it's kind of natural? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get results faster, easier, cheaper, bigger results than anybody else. But for you, it's like, well, can't everyone do this? The answer is no, they can't. Um, but you don't necessarily appreciate that. And my sister is a unique ability queen. UAQ is the new one. UAQ. <laughs> UAQ. That came up last Thursday in our TEDx workshop. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. So raising my kids. Value you know, creation kids. Unique oh ability God. kids. That's brilliant. It is unbelievable. So I'm so great. And one of the profiles we use is called Colby, K-O-L-B-E dot com. And just you know, raising my kids with Colby, knowing that they have instinctive strengths, knowing Clifton Strengths Finder, giving giving names, giving language to how they naturally strive and are successful and are, are 
you know, their strengths in the world has been huge. If nothing else, I am grateful to a strategic coach for that. That's awesome. like that has been a game changer. A lot of parents. How, how has that impacted your parents? Yeah. Like knowing your kids' unique abilities. Well, let me give you an example. So Madison, so Madison's now 23, Charlotte's 19, our two, our two girls. So I remember Madison, I think she was in grade three and she was struggling from September to December. Like doing homework was torture. And that's kind of when in Toronto, you can, if the kids get homework in the Toronto District School Board. So I was like, oh my gosh, she's got more implementer energy. She's got more physical energy. So I'm like, okay, Madison, I want you to run laps. So I'd have her run like laps in her house, which isn't that big, but it's big enough. And then she'd burn off some energy and she'd sit down, she's focused for 10 or 15 minutes. And then she's like starting getting super itchy again. She's not ADHD, the rest of us are, but not, not Madison. And then I'd have her run more laps again. And I did that for a while, but because I knew her Colby, because I knew how her brain worked and what her instincts were, I didn't criticize her. I didn't make her wrong. I didn't, um, I didn't think that she was a misfit. I right. didn't come down right. hard. I was right. like, okay, let's burn off that energy. Ellen, go. You know, I'd make it fun. I, I gave it fun. What a brilliant parenting. Yeah. That's great. That was only one of one of very few. Okay. <laughs> Let me We're going to celebrate the wins here. <laughs> you know, a win Forget is a win. the losses. <laughs> a win is a win. But then by, <laughs> de by December, she flipping figured it out. Wow. No problem with homework after that. Wow. So Just good. nailed it. So, so that knowing was, their wiring is critical. 100%. So such a gift to be able to understand my kid and allow me to be a better parent. Sure. Who doesn't want that? Sure. It's like so gratifying to appreciate that, okay, I have some additional tools with which to help my kids be successful. So and if everyone's cool. listening, Colby.com. K-O-L-B-E. K-O-L-B-E. Not, not the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Colby.com. Based on Kathy Colby's They've done over a million profiles yeah. now. Worldwide. We've taken it. I've, take, I've had my kids take it, my my older kids, my wife's taken it, yeah. and it's it's great. My wife's taken it, yep. I profiled my husband before I married him. Oh Let's my goodness. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. That was and part of the still dating together. Process. 100%. Still together. Still together. Oh yeah. Good 20, move. Well, we got married in... What year did it be? 1996. 96. Wow, wow, you were young if you're 39. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about this crazy uh, circumstance about yeah. you making money and the kids asking about it. Yeah. Or not asking about it. Well, so I've always done well. My husband's already done well. And you add our two incomes together, it's substantial. And so I was like, completely, I'm very, I have no shame about money. 100% want to be rich. Like that. That's, um, pro money. That's pro okay. Pro money, hundred percent. Um, it buys a lot of freedom. Buys freedom, and I like to have fun. So actually, that's probably the most critical thing you just said. Okay. Money okay. buys freedom. Hundred percent. So many kids are raised to want to be rich, to look cool, to get the Ferrari, to get the house, to get the jet, to get whatever it is. You're the reason that we're trained in building value and creating opportunities for ourselves and our employees and everybody else is yeah. to buy freedom. Hundred percent. That's a critical thing to understand about money. Yeah. Smart money parents want, buy freedom all the time. And I want to do it my way. No one else's way. The stuff that I did like to do. You want to enjoy what you're doing while you're creating that. Yeah, I bought That's myself good. a battery operated chainsaw. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's not a usual hobby for a woman. Just, That's just true. say. That's true. We have vacation property. I don't like dead tree limbs. So there you go. Um, there you go. But the issue with, especially if my youngest daughter came up, is that she was like, because I said, honey, you can ask me how much I make. You can ask us how well we do, but please don't share this with your friends. And Keep you know, it confidential. You know, sense. kids. Yeah. It's like they're like, well, my mom, my mom makes this much, or my dad makes this much. I'm like, so super not cool. So the message that she took from it, which was not my intention, was that money is shameful, wow. which is the opposite. <laughs> I'm like, no, money buys freedom. It's a good thing. But she got that she, because I said not to talk about it, that it wasn't good. It was like something to be maybe embarrassed about. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, I'm like, no, <laughs> that's yeah. not what I wanted to have happen. But it's like, we're trying to unravel that conversation now, but it's, it's tough. What are some of the things that she said to you that has, that kind of made you realize that that's how she felt about money? Oh, you said not to talk about it. I thought it wasn't good. Um, she has a lot of... <laughs> Youngest daughter adopts strays is what I've always said. I'm not talking yeah. as and I'm talking as okay. I was like, I'm not really a bad guy. No. But... Um, and so for people who like need help, it's yeah, yeah, a yeah. huge heart. Hard. Biggest heart. Um, but she's like, 
But I'm like, I mean, because her friends weren't his, her fa- their family just weren't as well off as we were. So I'm like, bring them, and support them. I bought clothes for the kids, took a lot of different things. I'm like, he might just not want to share that because envy happens. And envy is different than, for Dan Sullivan, is different than jealousy. Jealousy is you want what someone else has. Mm. Envy is you don't want them to have it. Yeah, no. you kill their cows instead of exactly, wanting exactly. Exactly. So I'm like, I didn't want to instigate that with their friends. Right. But Charlotte took that the other way. I'm like, I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the message. I want you to be successful. I want you to make a ton of cash. I want you to be able to buy your all your freedom that you want. I want you to liberate your ideas, create value for other people, get paid well for it. Mm. But it was an interest. How do I how to communicate that message? So it's like, yes, we do really, really well. We live in a nice neighborhood, a big, great house. They go to good schools. See, so like you know, it's just figuring out what's the right fit for her yep. has been interesting. Um, but that whole money conversation and, and money and shame. And is, is it cool to make a lot of money? Right. Other people right. Right. Are right. Is there husband. guilt? Is there guilt? You think so? not on my part? No, no, no. Of course not. No, <laughs> but but. But, I, I but saying to your mindset. kids, we can talk about like, but don't tell any of your friends. Yeah, but just amongst us and keep it quiet. So my uh-huh. admonition to keep it quiet. And you did tell them how much you make. Um, kind of. I was really careful about the number. Okay. Because I didn't want them to share that inadvertently because they didn't necessarily know what it meant, but other people might. Got it. So I was. I was. I'm not ashamed of how much how well I do or my husband. What do you think you would do differently, or how would you say it to make sure that? message that across to your youngest daughter it's totally great to make a lot of money just be aware that other people have conversations that are not as positive Mm. about that but i would love to know from you guys because both of you are extraordinarily successful i feel like this show how do you handle this this show (laughs) i want to learn i want to learn smart money parenting there are some topics that are really hard I think is this this is one of them this is definitely one of the parents i'm not alone parents do not want their kids to know how much they make yeah Parents do not want to share their net worth with their kids. Mm-hmm. Parents don't want to tell their kids how much money they saved for their college because the right. kid might become entitled and not try as hard. True story. These yeah. are tough ones. Yeah. But if you do that too much, your kids feel ashamed about money. They yeah. feel guilty about having money. Confused. And confused. Yeah, yeah they're scared. They're Why do we have more money than other people? Does that right. mean we're better? Yeah. There's just Is some weird fair? stuff that goes on in the world. I think it's important for you to understand, or the listener to understand, you do well financially because you add so much value to a lot of other people. And I focused on that. And yeah. I worked hard to create that. Yep. And I'm, I, it's my focus every single day when I'm working. To help enough people to create enough value to have left over. You get yeah. paid well because of the value you create. And, and to take risks. Yes. Like not all of it was an easy decision. I yep. remember times when I lived on craft dinner. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> right. Chad and I have made some terrible investments in the past. <laughs> Ditto. Everybody, yep. does. Like, that's the part of the game, but you have to have that cash confidence to do yep. it. And that's what shapes the world. And if kids lose that, right? And this is the generational wealth issue. Yes. Kids that have parents that are not doing well, mm-hmm. parents never want to talk about it. Like the last one I forgot was debt. Ooh. Parents never want their kids to know if they're in debt. Right. I don't want my kid to be terrified for the rest of their childhood that we're so broke that we can't cover bills. Yeah. Yep. Those are really hard things, but I think. If we can get kids to connect, when you create value in the world, Mm -hmm. there is a financial reward for the value, material value created. It helps you grow and thrive and it helps your legacy. But we should be thoughtful about how we build that into our kids. And how to have that be a healthy conversation rather than something to be ashamed of. Yeah. And the other thing is I probably passed on very inadvertently my own parents' conversation. Of course you did. Right. Like one, yeah. one of my parents was, is, was and is extremely generous to her own detriment sometimes. Yeah. And the other one was, as my stepmom would say, penny wise, pound foolish. Right. Like, mm-hmm. like my dad. So yeah. it's like. They reuse napkins. And, <laughs> you know, cheapskate, frugal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like spend on Dutch? small things. No. no I'm frugal. Dutch. That's what I know. <laughs> but, but not so wise on the big things. So I'm like, at one point you have to figure out your own by accident so 
Chad, I'm gonna throw the question. Yeah, yeah. How do you handle this? Because you must have. Do your you, kids know what you, you make, Chad? You have a lot of affluence, and how do your kids handle that? Uh, because not all their friends do, I'm sure. No, my kids do not know exactly how much I make. I, I talk openly about a lot of actual financial things with them, though. I was just sharing on a re recent episode. We had a big dinner on the last night of spring break. We were out of town, and. I just felt like, hey, then now was a good time to share an investment lesson with the kids. And so I taught them about how I, I used real estate in 2008 to 2011 and bought a bunch of investments out of state. They appreciated significantly in value. And I said, I recently, this was just last fall, I said, I wanted to buy this uh, pretty big apartment complex by myself without partners. But I, I had kind of a goal. I wanted to do it without spending a penny of my own money. Ooh, nice. And so I told the kids, basically, I laid out the entire business plan that I had. And I said, and I told them the numbers. I said, I went to a couple different banks and I said, here's my business plan to buy this apartment complex to another bank and got a business plan and said, this is for the, all the remodel construction because it's, I'm going to remodel the entire complex. Right. And so I, I got all them, all these partners on board, bought the apartment complex, and I said, in the next couple months, we're going to go up there. It's out of state. We're going to fly up there and visit the apartment complex and see the renovations. I'm going to show you the before and after pictures. And I said, I didn't spend a penny of my own money because of the wise investing that I did years ago. And I told them, I said, it's this many millions of dollars of a loan for this facility, for this mm -hmm. complex. This is how much rental income it's going to pay me. And I didn't have to put a penny of my own money down. I just made smart investments a long time ago and I continue to do that again and again and again. And the kids, I could see their eyes just like, what? And I'm like, this is how much in monthly income it's gonna pay. And I said, and eventually that apartment complex will go up in value and the loans will be paid down. Yeah. And that's just gonna be income that pays me and mom to continue supporting our lifestyle and our family and our charitable causes. And you can't hide affluence. Nope. Like, um, I, I know that I'm not willing to completely live like a miser just so my kids yeah. don't know that I'm right. successful. Like that's not my, that's not the, that's not the point. So, uh, we talk about, that's why I wrote the book smart That's what on my mind every day was I don't want to have entitled kids. We have a lifestyle that my parents did not have. And so how do I keep my kids grounded, humble, grateful, and Discipline, just discipline, yeah. kind people while having this affluence. And focused so, on creating value. And focused on being valuable. And yeah. so that's what I try to do. I hope, I think my kids have really done well with that. I, I don't think anyone calls them arrogant or entitled kids when they meet them. You just nailed it. That is a, what we call a money conversation. Yes. yes. The more money conversations you can have, mm -hmm. the better. Yeah. That doesn't mean, hey kids, here's how much debt we have. Here's how much money I have every year that I mean, <laughs> yeah. like that's not as helpful because then they might spend the rest of their life comparing. Well, the dollar amount isn't as useful, it's not as, useful. as the values that you're trying to say. Like, that is like, critical. That's it. Yeah. So I think the money conversations are important. Mm -hmm. So like for my kids, you know, daddy will talk about a business deal uh -huh. and I'll use it in terms of like, so if you take $10, here's what I did. I invested this $10 and in one year it turned into $18. And like, I'm just trying to connect it with them. Yeah. And you can say, you know, you might not say I make X amount of day. It's, you know, we're making hundreds of thousands of dollars doing this or tens of thousands of dollars doing like you can give ballparks to kids to kind of give them metric points like of ideas. But it's important to more than the number. It's the conversation of how you got to where you got, how they can get to where they, you know, in the future, how to get there and how to be smart and disciplined and wise in the process. And generous. Like I'm gonna ask this question, what's the downside and what's the upside of kids knowing what, you, what their parents earn? <laughs> what do you guys think? What's your off the cuff answer? What's the downside and what's the upside? Downside could be that if it's not a lot, maybe the kids will compare with other friends' parents. You can Google most jobs, by the way. Like, you can literally Google what the top 200 jobs in America make on average. Fun story. I was driving my kindergartner home, literally kindergartner home from uh, school, and his, and we were doing a carpool, and his little buddy was in the car, and uh, I had I was driving a new Tesla, and the little kid goes, just out of the blue, he, the kid that I don't know, the neighbor kid, he's like, how much did this car cost you? And I was <laughs> like, 
I was literally like, wow, that's a bold, yeah. bold question. And I, I said, oh, I said, it costs a lot. And he goes, yeah, but how much? And I was like, I was like, you know, I don't exactly remember. You know, just kind of just kind of it. And he goes, he literally says, I already know what it costs. It's about 120,000 plus taxes. I kid you not. No. no. And I was like, what? And, and my son goes, like, yeah, it's not right. No, my son goes, hundred and twenty thousand dollars no it didn't and he goes yes it did I, i've looked it up before and i'm like this kid's five or six years old so we pull up to drop him off and i get out of the car to go talk to his mom and i'm like what in the world is this guy doing like this kid is smart and she goes oh he's obsessed with cars he's just obsessed so he looks up the value and the cost of every car and he's like, I want to, when I get older, I want to have this car and this car. And he's naming off the prices and the features. And I don't even know all this stuff. But it's funny what, what you say. Like, you can look a lot of stuff up. They can. There's a lot of information online. So it's kind of foolish for us to try to hide everything from kids. Because right. the information is out there. Right. Well, and you, I love the aspirational aspect. Oh, yeah. If he wants it, he'll figure out for the sure. value for to sure. go yeah. get yeah. it. Yes. My, opinion awesome. is, my opinion is kids should be factoring in value and the price of what they're going to make in the jobs. Yeah. True. We tell kids, like, this is why in the gravy stack banking and investing app for kids, we have a game that's literally showing what people make in the top 200 types of jobs in America. And yeah. then they create a monthly budget for characters in the game. It's called the tree, tree house job fair. They, they help people find a job based on their, their education, their skills, what they love. And then they help them create a monthly budget to live off of that monthly income. Okay. So what the kids do in doing this is they're realizing, oh, this is a job that I love, but it might not make enough for the lifestyle I want to live. Or here's a job that makes a lot that I do love that I could live off of. And then they have to make decisions on housing and food and transportation and communication and the extras they can afford in that style of a job. Okay. Do you we know, need to teach this. Do you know, okay, I'm listening to the first few podcasts when they first came out. I'm like, I, I wish I could start over. Yeah. Shoot. I wish I had little kids. My kids are 19 and 23. It's I've never, never too that. late. I'm like done. Okay. <laughs> you're you're going to help the grandkids though. Uh, I, know some, oh. I know some 39 year olds that have had kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm no, there I'm is. 19 years and you're fine. But it's like, it's, it's like, oh my gosh, the, what I wish I'd known. Because I wasn't that savvy. I mean, yeah. am I a Robert Kiyosaki fan? Sure. Do I like financial literacy? Yes. Have I played the cash flow game? Yes. But am I as good at it as you guys? No! Not by nope. any way, shape, or form. And I think I think one of the gifts that of, of Gravy Stack and of your podcast is how much education parents are going to get. They're like, oh, that's how that works. Yeah. They never actually put two plus two plus two yeah. plus two plus two together to get to and how to translate right? to a kid yeah yeah it, so it's kind of it's kind of crazy can i give you a, um an encouragement yes it's you know this it's never too late but hallelujah it's never too late you're you're their parent so yeah. you're dead so sure, sure. here's the beautiful part what we talk to parents about with older kids uh -huh. right you never miss the boat because kids are on different timelines yeah. for all the stuff yeah Right now is probably the perfect age to start having the conversations with your older daughters about here's what mom and dad are doing right now. Right. Here's our investments we just made. Right. Here's what we're thinking about giving to this this month. Yeah. Can you guys help us think through this? Nice. Here's a, here's an opportunity we're looking at right now and just start talking about it. And I had some really great coaching advice for my very first investment. Wendy, you know, thank you. Um, but it was like, you know, it just was happenstance. It's mm. not organized, not structured, not conscientious, not careful, not thoughtful, none of those yeah, things. You're trying to keep them alive and feed them for 18 years. And it's like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. It's and, and my expertise is is people, it's not money, mm. right? Like I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm capable of making a lot of money, but the rest of it, mm, I bet you have an incredible relationship with your kids. I love my kids. Yeah. yeah. They, they love me back. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing for my kids is that they can tell me anything yep. and and I'll take it and not freak out on them, not do any of those things. So that that is the most important to me. Maintaining that connection with my kids no matter what. Are we are we different? Yes. <laughs> We're different human beings. But maintaining that is most important to me. Well, that's the foundation. That's though. it. That's, that's it. it. 
If I can do that. Rules without relationship equals rebellion. There you go. But because you have the relationship. Spoken by a rebel. <laughs> yeah. uh, rules with relationship equals results. So yeah. I think you've now you have that door wide open. Yeah. To have these conversations now with them when they're at college and post college and when work and yeah. thinking through relationships, I think you're in the perfect spot to start having more and more of these conversations. So, what a cool talk! Yes, thank you, Shannon, so much yeah. for being on our show. We appreciate you guys uh, listening, following, sharing, liking. Give Tell us, us what you think. Tell us what you think in the comments. How do you feel? That's Tell right. us how you feel. What That's should right. you share and not share yeah. with your kids at what time? Please give us your thoughts. So. Thanks again. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, Thank you, Scott. Strategic Brilliant. coach. Brilliant. Strategic coach if you're an entrepreneur out yeah. there that wants to grow and thrive and have the freedom of time, money, relationships, and purpose, strategic coach is your place to go, and Shannon will be your guide, along with Dan and many others. Yes. Uh, and go to Smart Money Parenting and leave us a comment or question. We want to get more feedback. Thanks so much. Share this with someone that matters to you. And thanks for watching and listening and viewing. We love you. Bye. Thank you. It takes more than money if you want to succeed. I got to know what to do with it. I got to take the lead. Got to give them confidence. Got to make them smart. If your kids are going to thrive, now's the time to start. Smart Monday Parenting.